Hello everyone, welcome to another exciting video on next race. Today we will discuss another important current research area which is the generation of hydrogen by the electrolysis of water molecules. We are all aware of the fact that fossil fuels are not going to last forever and we need alternative sources of energy. One such technique for the generation of green energy is the electrochemical water splitting and production of hydrogen. Electrochemical water splitting is a process that uses an electrical current to split water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen gases through a series of reactions occurring at the specialized electrodes. It is a key technology for producing clean and sustainable hydrogen fuel. As hydrogen can be used as an energy carrier and a clean fuel sources for various applications. The electrochemical water splitting process typically take place in an electrolyzer which consists of two electrodes submerged in an electrolyte solution, usually water, the two electrodes are known as cathode and anode. When an electric current is applied to the electrolyzer, several reactions occur at each electrode. At the cathode, reduction of water takes place, whereas at anode, oxidation of water takes place, generating hydrogen gas and oxygen gas respectively. Here you can see and this is a typical representation of an electrochemical cell used in the water splitting process. The main components of a water splitting cell includes the electrodes where wa water splitting cell contains two electrodes, an anode and a cathode. These electrodes are typically made of conductive materials such as metals or metal oxides which can withstand the harsh conditions of the electrolysis process. The electrolyte which is a substance that enables the conduction of electric current between the electrodes. In the case of water splitting, the electrolyte is usually water itself or an aqueous solution containing dissolved salts or acids to enhance the conductivity. In some water splitting cells, a membrane or separator is placed between the cathode and the anode. This membrane allows the passage of ions while preventing the mixing of the gases produced at each electrode and finally an electrical power source. The HER is influenced by various factors that can impact its uh, efficiency and kinetics. Uh, some of the key factors on which hydrogen evolution reaction depends are the choice of electrode material which significantly affect the process, the certain metals and metal alloys such as platinum, nickel and other transition metals who exhibit good catalytic activity. The catalyst design is one of the most important criteria. The design catalyst must obey the Sabatier principle, which states that the binding energy between the catalyst and the reactant should be neither too strong nor too weak. The pH of the electrolyte solution can also influence the HER. It has been found that in acidic condition, the reaction rates tend to be higher compared to the alkaline conditions. The overpotential is the additional potential applied to initiate the HER compared to the thermodynamic potential. It represents the energy required to overcome the activation barrier of the reaction. Lowering the over potential is crucial to improve efficiency and reduce energy loss in the HER process. The surface morphology and structure of the electrode play a significant role in HER. High surface area such as nanoparticles, nanowires or hierarchical structure provides more active sites for the reaction leading to enhanced HCR kinetics. Typically increasing the temperature also increases the rate of reaction by providing more thermal energy for the reaction to occur. But also I'd like to say that uh, here optimization is uh, very essential. And lastly, adequate mass transport of reactants and products to and from the electrode surface is also crucial. Some of the other experimental factors like overpotential Tafel slope, exchange current density, stability of the electrocatalyst, ferritic efficiency, turnover frequency, etc., and all also come into play. You can learn details about them in the literature. I would uh, try to make a separate video about them in the future. Currently, people are also trying to develop photochemical systems for water splitting process with the use of solar energy. The key difference between electrochemical water splitting and photochemical water splitting lies in the energy source 
used to drive the water splitting process. In electrochemical water splitting requires the use of an electrical current to drive the reaction. It takes place in an electrolyzer, which consists of two electrodes, cathode and anode, immersed in an electrolyte solution. When electric current is applied, water molecules undergo oxidation at the anode and reduction at the cathode, as I said earlier, resulting in the production of uh, hydrogen and oxygen gases. The electrical energy required for reaction is supplied from an external power source, such as a direct current power supply, whereas photochemical water splitting, on the other hand, utilizes light energy to drive the reaction. It involves the adsorption of photons by a photosynthesizer or a semiconductor material which generates charge carriers, mainly electrons and holes. These charge carriers participate in redox reaction on the surface of the catalyst or semiconductor leading to water splitting. The light source can be solar radiation such as sunlight or artificial sources. The photochemical water splitting has the advantage of directly utilizing renewable energy from sun and does not require an external power source. Here are some of the potential developments and trends that could shape the future of electrochemical water splitting. Researchers are continually working on developing more efficient catalysts and electrode materials for water splitting. Novel catalyst designs such as nanostructured materials and composite catalysts are being explored to enhance catalytic activity and reduce energy loss. The development of cost-effective and earth-abundant catalysts for water splitting is a major focus of the research. Transition metal-based catalyzed, non-precious metal-based catalyzed and molecular catalysts are being investigated as they are alternative to expensive and scarce noble catalysts like platinum. Electrolyzer design are being optimized to improve the performance and reduce cost attachments in cell architectures such as flow through the design, micro reactors and membrane technologies can enhance mass transport, minimize reactant crossover and improve durability. Electrochemical water splitting can be powered by renewable energy sources such as solar and wind power, making it crucial technology for energy storage and grid balancing. The integration of water splitting process with the renewable energy is expected to increase, allowing for the production of hydrogen from clean and abundant energy sources. Future developments aim to make electrochemical water splitting economically viable and scalable. Advances in material synthesis, electrode manufacturing techniques, and system engineering can contribute to reducing costs associated with catalyst membranes and overall system components. In here, what water splitting has the potential to produce other valuable products beyond hydrogen. For example, the generation of oxygen can help in applications in industries and other pharmaceuticals and metal refining uh, processes. Furthermore, the integration of electrochemical water splitting with other electrochemical processes such as carbon dioxide reduction or uh, nitrogen reduction reaction could enable the production of valuable chemicals and fuels. Here are some of the sources from which I have taken help for preparing this presentation. You can go through them uh, and so okay, that's it for now. Thank you everyone for further updates in research in chemical sciences. Stay tuned only on next race.